It is winter and it's snowing out here, so I picked up this. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda out here in my garage with my brand new snowblower. This is a Toro self power clear, 60 volt self propelled. And now you might know that that doesn't sound like the snowblowers that have been available before. In fact, I have a power clear because it is the best snowblower for my situation here. You know, sometimes we have some mild winters, sometimes they're a little heavier, but I have had the two stage snowblowers in the past. I've had some really big gas snowblowers, the errands, and then I don't remember the other ones that I've had but they've all worked great but they are generally overkill you know overnight the most i think we've ever really gotten is like eight to ten inches and that's actually pretty unusual but if you're by a lake or upstate or further north something like that you might get a lot of snow and maybe you need a little more horsepower but for me most of my snowboy has been with my trusty power clear non-self-propelled single stage but it does have a metal auger and it has been great but and it really hasn't left me wanting, but I thought, wow, they've got a new one here that's self-propelled. I think actually takes two batteries, so you get more power and more range. So what's not to love about that? I mean, it's all the things that I just might upgrade on mine if I could, and Toro made it. So let's get this thing unboxed, set up, and then see if we can blow the snow. All right, so first things first, I cut open the top of the box, and this thing looks like a beast you know kind of like me wearing a shirt from baby gap look this thing is pretty much put together but we have this metalized finish that is actually on the two-stage power clear snowblower you can also see that we have two big cavernous openings for dual batteries right here so those 16 volt batteries are going to be nice and snug in there but man that is going to be kind of crazy powerful so looks like we have all of the stuff attached here so it looks like i just need to take it out and then do a little bit of assembly here the chute the covers i think i don't know that might be it but that's not too bad all right let's get this thing unboxed all right, there is a little notice in here that says batteries ship separately, and I will tell you that's true. I got a separate box with the batteries. You can see the cover for the batteries right here, kind of transparent. And then we have the chute itself, which looks pretty nice, um, pretty big, robust. We get the instruction manual, a few bolts here, so I think that's probably what the chute will be held down with. And then the rest of it looks pretty self-explanatory Look, looks like we're just going to loosen these up and then pull this out here and then put it through that pin there on both sides and tighten it down and then put the chute and the cover on and we will try this out i will tell you what if you have ever assembled one of the gas blowers before this is so much simpler you know you've got like throttle cables and all sorts of stuff like push rods and all sorts of stuff that you have to put together on the gas blower so if you're looking for an easy setup hmm it doesn't get much easier than the electrics all right let's finish this up all right so as i was saying you just kind of loosen this up and then this comes out like this right and then you take this and you put it through there so it's kind of like having two bolts in one and then you tighten this back down and that should hold this side in and now what we're going to do is do the same thing on this side too all right then we want to put the top on you can see we have two little holes here and there are little posts on this side so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just fit it over one of the posts on that far side right there make sure it's over and then you just kind of manhandle it pull it a little bit to slip over that and that's pretty much all you have to do pretty easy i like it cool onto the chute all right putting on the chute is actually a little bit of oh well, it's not a faff i wouldn't call it but it's kind of like stacking bricks. You can see here we have four holes, but there is a screw in there. So you are going to line up the three empty holes with the three empty holes on the chute. So I'm just gonna kind of put that there for a second. But then what you are going to do is you're going to take this and put this down on top of it. So you can see we have little taller screw holes there and it will stack on top of the other one there. And then you will use the three screws and a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten it down. So it should be as simple as going one, two and then dropping the screws in there tightening them down and i think having one of these cordless screwdrivers is going to make it just a little bit easier here yep all right 
right, so the chute is installed here. I wanna show you that we have this little paddle here so I can raise it up or down, right? You might expect that. Looks like this is probably where I would normally have it. And then you have this handle down here to rotate it. Now I wanna show you that there seem to be some detents. It's kind of like a little bit of a geared track or something because if I move this, it's pretty easy to move. It kind of lifts it up and I can just kind of swivel it from side to side, but it won't just kind of easily move. So if you're rocking it, it's not going to move around, but you don't have to do anything. There's no trigger or anything. You just kind of move it and it clicks and stays into place. So that's pretty easy. All right. All right. Now, as it stated, it does come with the charger here. It's a stand-up charger. You can put this inside. I really like it. And it comes with a couple of these batteries. So what we have here are these Flex Force batteries. They come in a couple sizes. This is a big guy here. So really, really super powerful. But if I hit the button right up here, what you can see is it's fully charged because I went ahead and I plugged these in overnight. So this should be fully charged and the other one should be fully charged. So let's go ahead and drop these into the snow blower here. And you can see the little opening on this side. It'll go onto the teeth on this side. So you just kind of put it there and push it in. And this will be the eject button. Ooh, the lights came on already. So what you can see here is we have an eco and this is one for on or off. I usually leave this off. I usually don't have any problems with that. And then what we have here is the handlebar. I've got to unwrap this. And this will be your engagement bar. So when you want to start this guy, you'll pull this back and then hit the power button. And then you'll only need this, right? And if you release that, it'll turn the auger off. Okay, so power button there. All of the equipment up here. The lights here are on. Oh, they just went off automatically. So guess when you put the battery in there, they will go on. And my guess is when you pull that back, as I am pulling it back right now, the lights go on. So you don't even have to worry about turning the lights on or off. They go on automatically. And that looks super cool. Looks like the front of an Audi or something. Man, those are really bright LEDs. Okay, I'm going to put the other battery in here and then get the jacket and the gloves on. And let's blow the snow. All right, before we get into the testing, and I have a lot of questions that probably need to be answered about this snowblower, I wanted to pull out my power clear, my beloved E21. This is a single battery snowblower. You can see that the batteries go right in there. And this is kind of your standard size for a single stage snowblower. And it has been great, you know, metal auger right there. And it's nice and small. It's actually very light. So I can actually carry it into my basement when the winter is over, store it for the summer in the basement, which is really super nice. And for most of my driveway needs, you know, 60, 70 feet and the sidewalk here, it has been everything that I've needed. Now, one of the things that I have kind of wanted a little bit is that self-propelled goodness that you get in the dual stages and this one says power propel and I was kind of wondering how it propels itself because as I was looking in the back here these are just freewheeling wheels it's just on an axle there and what I realized here is that the auger here is rubber you know it's a very very thick you know reinforced rubber but I think that that rubber goes all the way down to the surface or kind of cuts into the snow and actually provides the forward propelling motion here. But generally, they are pretty close to the same size. So what I love about this is it's not one of those dual triple stage snow blowers that takes up a ton of space and it's not that heavy. I definitely could carry this guy down to the basement as well. And otherwise, they're about the same other than this one has basically twice the capacity and power as this one because of the batteries here, right? So, so I just wanted to show that to you. Now, I think we are going to give this guy a workout, even though, yeah, you might be saying, Pete, that doesn't look like a ton of snow. It's not a ton of snow, but what ended up happening the other day, you can see the icicles hanging off my car here, is that I think they said four inches. I don't know that we got it right where I'm at here, but what ended up happening is that it kind of sleeted before. So we got all of this ice that basically covered everything. The roads were actually atrocious yesterday, and then it kind of thinned out and became snow. So what we have is down here under the snow that you can see, I have this packed ice here. So it's what you can see is it kind of looks like giant slushy or hail, you know, it's just kind of gross and you can see how it's 
basically ice underneath there. So I am kind of curious how close we will get to the pavement. I'm not expecting to get all the way there, but if we can kind of get down to that top layer of ice that kind of fell, sleeted on here, froze as it was a little warm before everything turned to snow, I think this will be a fairly good test, even though it's not super deep snow. If it were just super deep and light and fluffy, you know, I actually expect most snow blowers to handle that. It's really the real world stuff of getting kind of a couple layers of that creme brulee and then covered with the powder on top of it that is pretty interesting. The other thing is I'm kind of curious if I can do the whole driveway here as well as the sidewalk here which obviously has nothing done but the first thing I want to do here is just show you that I only have one battery in here because I'm kind of guessing you are probably thinking well Pete can I run this on one battery? Can I run it on two batteries obviously but can I run them on two different Toro size batteries because I have the smaller capacity battery as well first of all I just want to show you what you do here to turn it on is pull this back and then hit this power button guy comes on it's nice and quiet if you live in a residential area and are doing this early in the morning you're not going to wake anyone up and then if I just push this woo, baby oh my gosh all right, first of all, I'm gonna stop it right there. First of all, it's running on one battery and I was pushing it one-handed. Don't do that. Make sure you use all your safety gear, two hands, good control, but um, that went down to the pavement. That just cut through. You can see where it's frozen here, that frozen layer. That is awesome. I am super stoked about that. All right, so it runs on one battery. Now I wanna get one of those smaller uh, Toro batteries and throw it in there and just make sure that it's compatible with two different size batteries. Let me grab one of those. All right, so I grabbed another battery here. It's a Toro battery here. You can see Flex 4, 60 volt. But what this is, is this is the smaller battery, 2.5 amp hours. I mean, it looks kind of the same, but you can tell right here that it is thinner, maybe about half as thick as the one that is already in there. I can just kind of show you, that's that battery. Here is this battery. So you can see how much thinner this one is, right? But I just kind of wanted to see if I could put two different size batteries in there. Click it in there. You can see how much space there is right there versus that one. And now I kind of wanted to see if it would run on two different size batteries. Aha! All right, no problems there either. Oh man, I love this self propelled. It's just kind of pulling itself along the ground and I'm doing that one handed. Again, I don't recommend that. So now what I want to do here is go ahead and blow some snow. You've seen what it can do off eco mode with the standard batteries that you might already have for other Toro products. And let's see if we can clear this whole driveway and get rid of even all this icy stuff way at the bottom here that you got to kind of kick through. All right, let's get on it. Let's get down to business. All right, so I've been blowing a little while with this. Instead of just telling you my thoughts afterwards, I'm going to take you on a little journey with me because this thing is a beast. First of all, we're going to have to go ahead and turn it on. And I just want to tell you, this thing is stupid powerful. Uh, versus my other power clear, which I really love, there's no question just being behind this, this thing just cuts through stuff, that heavy, thick stuff, like the other one can't. And I'm not sure what they've done in terms of like the motor or the torque, but even on one battery or one and a half, it's just so much more powerful. I'm not sure, like I said, what they've done, but I mean, it's crazy, all right? So we get that, first of all, and it's whisper quiet, but once you get into the snow, just cuts through it. All right. The other thing I want to say here is you might be able to see me moving with this thing. This thing moves fast <laughs> and I'm not exactly sure how it moves so fast. I guess these augers are just running super fast, but I often find myself pulling back and actually being dragged along by this thing. And I've also noticed that you can kind of lift up the front and it will disengage a little bit. So in terms of like snow blowing at a leisurely walking pace, this thing moves quick. I mean, and if you are one of those people that are impatient and want to clear driveways quickly and you don't like the single stages because they're not self-propelled 
this one moves quick. Like I said, I'm kind of holding on to it so that it doesn't run away from me here. But I'm probably not being a great example of how to snow blow, but obviously doing it one handed here means that it is self propelled because you would never be able to do this with just a single hand, right? Just wants to run, baby, wants to run. And it is just going in that, right? So you can see how powerful it is, but just how fast this guy wants to get going. It's like a horse, a wild stallion, Toro. I guess that's a bull thing, but all right. So that is pretty amazing. Now, want to finish up the driveway and then see if we can get to that sidewalk there that has been covered over. It's been covered over longer than it should be because I have actually snow blowed the driveway uh, since the snow came down, but that's going to be where it's going to be thickest and we'll give that a try next. So first of all, first run with this guy, I cannot believe how close to the driveway we are. You can see some of the stuff, which is just a solid brick of ice. I mean, like over here, I mean, it actually chewed up a lot of that pretty well. I'm just stunned how much driveway I can actually see. I would not normally have thought I would be able to do that with this self-propelled lawnmower. I would also say I am less winded than I normally would be because this sucker is pulling me along. I mean, you know, it's dragging my 200 pounds behind it pretty easily here. So as I mentioned, we have done the whole driveway now. I think I still have charge. It's still running. And what I thought I would do here is do the walkway, which I think is right about here. Sometimes I end up snow blowing a little bit of grass because it can be hard to see here but we are going to do that too and then just see how much charge we have left on that oh, i'm on grass there we go all right cutting through that pretty easily look I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You can see this chunky ice on the bottom here. So it's cutting through that. Well, man, we had a big chunk right here. A little, all right. But as it's going all the way to the sidewalk there, that's my first pass. And I'll be honest, I should know where the sidewalk is better, but this is where we're snow blowing grass first. Got a little significant dirt up there but let's just finish this up here and see how clean we can make this before we call it quits for the morning all right well here is my freshly snow plowed sidewalk here and it is down to the concrete and looking good i should put some markers up here so that i know where the edges are because definitely did get a little grass but that did not slow the snow blower down and now i have a nice clean walkway you can see the snow on the edges here but man this power propel toro power clear is amazing i guess i am always impressed with the toro stuff because they make a really quality product i mean it's just something that it stands above the rest because of the construction and i think the thought that goes into it but the thing about this is that it's pretty much everything i wanted in a snowblower it's small compact it's electric I'm not doing any oil changes. I'm not putting fuel stabilizer in it at the end of the year. It's not big and heavy. I can move it and store it in a place that I want. Like I said, my basement, your shed, whatever. It is self-propelled so that it's going to save you that time and effort from pushing it. And like I said, it is really self-propelled, man. This thing is dragging me through the snow. And the other thing is it's not short on power. I mean, look at this. It went through the ice, through the snow to get down to the bare concrete here. And that is super impressive to me because... 
not every snowblower can do that. And I have had a lot that are like the 30 volt or the 25 volt snowblowers that are pretty good at moving snow off of patios and steps and decks and things like that. But to be able to do a full on driveway like this, the sidewalk here and all of that, I think is amazing. And they have really thought about us because they have said, hey, you might need more battery capacity depending on how much snow you got to move. So I'm just going to hit the battery level right there. You can see we're down to one on that one and I'm going to hit it on there and we are down to one on that one. So I have like 25% capacity left and this was a full on a couple passes on some of these areas here to do it, you know, to kind of get to where I have it right now. If this were like me in the morning trying to get to work, doing it as quickly as possible, one quick pass is all I would need or want or have time for. And I bet I'd be at 50% capacity. So I love the fact that, yeah, you can swap in new batteries if you need to keep going here. But if you want to put in two of these big boy batteries instead of one of the big one of the small, maybe you only have one. Maybe you don't need both batteries. So, you know, that's going to help too. So just a lot of options. I just love it. It's super versatile, super powerful, super user friendly and man it looks the business just like me hey if you want to pick up this self-propelled toro power clear single stage snowblower i'll put a link to it in the description below peter von panda out we can discover more and explore so much deeper we can live better than ever things to peter peter von panda